So there should be a few, few people coming in. Um, I know a few people that are um, busy today, but they're still going to try to get on. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, I hope you guys like the, uh, the, back, the background. This has gone a lot of effort to uh, give you some good views of the Blue Mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, Joseph, so uh, how's business? Um, there's a lot of unsurety in the market now with the Reserve Bank looking to raise the rates. Mm -hmm. People are not really sure what's going to happen, so but we'll, I think it should be okay. I mean, they'll probably raise it gradually. But, um, yeah, hopefully people don't get affected too much by the interest rates. So Joseph is from, or runs a business called Intellect Finance. Uh, I just want to say good morning to Mambi. Uh, Mambi is a very uh, long-time friend of mine. Um, so thanks for your message, Mambi. Uh, I'm just looking to see the participants while we're talking. Okay, so we're just waiting for a few more people to come in. Uh, I'm yeah. actually looking forward to Moose's uh, Man Ush video. I don't know if you can see it in the background. It's just there, the Man Ush video. I've always wanted to learn how to make Man Ush, yeah. and I'm waiting for Moose to release that video. Man Ush, man, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, how are you going, Anthony? It's good to see you. Uh, I've just got to check for questions. Here we go. Oh, you can't hear me. Okay, I'll speak louder. Can you hear me now? I'm just putting the volume up, guys. Can you hear us? Uh, if anyone can let us know if you can hear us. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks, Anthony. Um, there is a lag, I, I noticed. We've done a bit of trials the other day, so you, some of you might have got notifications because we were doing some... Uh, um, okay, Manby. I think it might be from Manby's side because Anthony can hear us clearly. Yeah, maybe it might be your uh, um, computer maybe or maybe your phone. Um, yeah, so everyone else is saying that they're okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so we did some trial live... Uh, um, we went live a couple of times just to try it out and see to make sure that we know what we're doing and we're still fondling our way through it but anyway regardless so what, what i want to talk about this morning there's a few of you in here now um i'm just looking as you're going uh thanks joseph for your message um so yeah uh i started youtube in roughly about um middle of august i think it was the 15th of august hey good morning to in um, yeah, so we started 15th of August, uh, released my first video, which is the Nilex video. Um, I was very green. I just wanted to put a YouTube video out there. Had been thinking about YouTubing for about probably two years. Um, had a bit of a difficult uh, situation. Uh, my father was quite ill and uh, God rest his soul, he passed away from, uh, from emphysema. And, um, and uh, he really wanted me to do this YouTube and he knew that uh, it'd be something good for me. So, uh, and I know he's with me, watching me. So I've just got my daughter giving us a cup of tea. Uh, Joseph's got his little princess cup. This is what Musa wants me to drink from. So, man, Billy, I've now got my uh, my coffee, so it should be fine. You sound like you can't hear me, so I need uh, to have my coffee. I'll have my first sip. <laughs> Very little, good, man. Little princess. Uh, actually, talking about little princess, just quickly, uh, Mambi is uh, de definitely my little princess. Um, sorry about that, Mambi, but... Uh, it's true. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I, I, I'm going back to uh, talking about videos. So uh, I've got a um, background of building, but also, also, as you've seen some of my videos, I've got a background of dressmaking um, and a few other things. I've done a lot of things in my lifetime. Uh, because of my back injury that I, uh, that I went through in uh, mid, um, what was it, uh, 2017, so it's coming on five years now, which Joseph was with me when I, uh, when I was having the operation. Uh, he came to see me in hospital. But um, anyway, uh, things were up there, upside down for like three years and I, I had to make a decision what I had to do for work. And uh, so unfortunately I struggle. Even now sitting down is going to be a bit of an effort for me for a long period. You'll see most of my videos, I'm not sitting down, uh, I'm standing. And uh, so when I'm standing, I can sort of move around a bit. It takes a while, but once I get into it, I can move properly. Um, so yeah, so my spine was kind of
compromised my nerve system uh, on the lower back. So everything from my waist down has been affected, unfortunately. So I did get back, I think, about 70% of, uh, of, my, uh, of my nerves uh, movement and all the rest. So uh, it's been a bit of a journey. So this YouTubing is purely because of that, what happened in there. So um, you'll see a lot of the videos. There are going to be a lot of diverse videos. And uh, Joseph has actually commented a number of times about my diversity. Um, Joseph, I'm going to ask you, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly right. It could be Giuseppe. Um, but it is Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Do apologise, Giuseppe. I'm not a very good reader. Uh, that's one thing I am not a good reader. Uh, so I just want to ask you, Giuseppe, um, the diversity. Are you okay with all the diversity that I'm doing on this channel? I'll just wait for a second for him to write something and I'll just talk about something else. Um, I think... Um, Something good always comes out of something bad. I know yeah, for suffered. sure. For sure. You've suffered a lot in that, but now you you can share the skills and the knowledge you have yeah. on YouTube, so everyone can. This is this this now all these things I'm doing, uh, whether they are uh, you know for everyone or not, uh, they're out there now and they're out there for you know for a long period. Uh, a lot of people will learn from these videos. Uh, there we go, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, yeah, it's nearly it's really good. Keep uh, the viewers interested. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. I, I needed to hear whether the diversity was too much. Um, <laughs> I love the little princess. Um, yeah, so there's going to be a lot more videos coming. I've got a list of things I want to do. And, and, and let me tell you, because finances aren't that great for me, um, YouTube is actually an income for me. Please, please all understand that I'm doing this for an income. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you can uh, share these videos that I do. Um, hit the like buttons and, and also subscribe if you haven't, um, so they are for an income. But at the same time, I think most of you can see that I'm actually, I've got my heart in it uh, and everything I do on video is real, okay? So um, initially I was sort of getting used to YouTubing, uh, how, you know, talking in front of a camera. Uh, now I just see the camera as another person. Uh, I'm seeing you guys when I'm talking into that video. Uh, and so you guys are a part of that. And I really appreciate uh, all your uh, support. I really do. Um, I, I love the messages you guys send. I always ask for messages because I actually like them. Uh, it, it keeps me going. It gives me direction. Okay, so uh, Anthony English has just sent me a message. Uh, you don't have to appeal to every person in every video. Some people love the building videos, others for food, others for raising chickens and sewing. Thanks, Anthony. Now, by the way, Anthony has been instrumental in guiding me with YouTube. Um, and these live chats are initially probably going to be maybe once a month, uh, but I'd like to get them down to probably once every two weeks. Now, I know not everyone can be on the uh, live streams all the time, and I don't expect you to, but um, it is just a way of connecting with you guys, get to know what I'm doing, uh, if it's the right path or not, because there's no use making videos if they're just brain dead boring. Uh, I don't want that. I want videos that are um, stimulating. I want videos that challenge. I want videos that teach. So I, I want to cover a, a broad range of what I'm trying to do. So, um, uh, yeah, so look, thanks very much, guys. I think there's going to be more people coming on this live chat because there's a lot of people busy. But so far, there's, there's a fair few of you on there. So thank you very much. Now I'll take the opportunity when you guys are on. I'm going to just now properly, formally introduce Joseph. Now, this is Joseph from Intellect Finance. Um, he's helped me to get a loan in the past. Uh, very uh, honest guy, very uh, uh, very approachable and, and uh, very easy to deal with, uh, even though he is of Lebanese origin. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um, yeah, so look... Uh, I did the Absco video. I think it was my second video that I posted, um, and I did that green. Now, I've put these sheds up before, but I thought it would be a good YouTube video, and as it turned out, people struggled putting flat pack sheds together. Wonder why. There's so many components to it, but I've done it before. <laughs> and so I enjoyed doing the Absco shed, but before I released that video, Joseph said, mate, I've got one. And I said, how about if I do a video on yours too and see, compare the, the difference? And let me tell you, the company Easy Shed probably needs to rebrand themselves 
not easy. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, but can I tell you, I'm not going to rubbish the brand. They actually are a really good brand. It is, it is a good quality shit. It's still the job. It's a hard for me. So. I'm telling it, but it does people's head in because there's no labeling, no uh, direction, not no no real uh, explanation how to put it together. So when I did Joseph's shed, I then finished the outro of my shed. And when I did the outro of my shed explaining the Absco shed, I did it out of so much conviction because I just finished putting the easy shed together. And uh, I've got to tell you, it, it took the Absco shed took me probably two days because of my back and I had the girls helping me. So, but I mainly did it myself. With Joseph's shed, we both were doing it two days and we were struggling. So Absco is needs more direction and needs more labeling on their components. And you'll find it'll be an easy shed to put together. Pre-hold, pre-punch really goes a long way. The Absco shed have holes everywhere and you just put the screws where you know you've got to put them. The Absco, so the easy shed is not. You've got to get your measuring tape out, you've got to mark it, and you've got to make your uh, screw holes. So if you watch that video, you'll see what I mean. Uh, I will put a link below for both those videos um, just in case any of you are interested to see it again. Anyway, so back to intellect finance. Uh, so uh, uh, Joseph has just moved to the Nepean area. He was in the Parramatta area. And it's been, what, how many years now, Joseph? Three years. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Time has gone fast. So I was, yeah, previously like that in Parramatta, but we, um, we moved over to uh, the mountains and... Uh, to be closer to the big daddy, <laughs> little princess, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so I moved the office to be closer to home and the kids for schools and that, and uh, yeah, it's been good, fantastic. And that that easy shed was a gift from my wife for Father's Day, a flat pack. So Musa did save my life in helping me put it together because <laughs> I said on the video that it would take would have taken me about a week, but. In reality, I don't think I would have been able to put it together. I would have struggled a lot. You know, it's funny, Joseph. I had a message from a guy from uh, Easy uh, about the Easy Shed video, and he wrote me a message saying, "I wish I'd seen your video before I bought it." <laughs> he and said, "Was did he have a trade background?" No, um, and and they're not made for trade backgrounds. You, no. they, they, they are fairly easy to put together, but unfortunately, yeah, but for someone that's experienced, like the Easy person, Shed, the average person like me, that's right. But the Easy Shed thought. needed background. Yeah. But the Absco shed does not need background. You can actually follow directions quite easily. Some people get stuck on the doors uh, because it's a little bit um, confusing how do you make the jams. The jams are quite easy if you just follow the instructions on the Absco shed. With the easy shed, you have to follow my video. <laughs> Everyone worries it. Everyone struggles with it. Uh, my brother-in-law actually uh, sent me a message, or his wife sent me a message, I should say, uh, Joanne. Uh, she sent me a message saying, I wish you had made this video two weeks earlier or released it two weeks earlier because her husband put one up with a builder mate uh, in their holiday house up north, and they spent two full days on it and still struggled to put it together. So, and that's from a builder. Um, now, I have a building background too, so that, that's sort of cheating a bit. But you do need to know a little bit about structure when it comes to easy sheds, which is easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, uh, guys, is there any questions you have? Uh, about any other videos. Uh, Giuseppe, you've been watching nearly all my videos and not commenting on most of them. Um, uh, by, by the way, Nugget is going to be on very soon. If anyone wants to know Chicken Nugget, uh, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, so, so, here, so we did work out the Chicken Nugget. Yeah, once. it took me four weeks to find out. Oh, <laughs> Nugget, I'll tell you. I was getting messages from this Nugget guy who was just driving me nuts, asking all my friends, who's Nugget? And ended up being one of my close friends. Uh, so anyway, that was very funny. So Nugget will be on uh, shortly. He's at a... Uh, father-son camp with the school um, and he's going to try to get on uh, when he gets the opportunity. So he did say around about 9.20, 9.30 or something. So uh, he's probably driving there now. Uh, th this live uh, chat will probably be going to about uh, 9.45, maybe 10 o'clock at most because Joseph's got to go. Anyway, uh, yeah, so any questions from anyone? Uh, I'm surprised Anthony uh, hasn't got any questions. Um, now, sorry, I didn't finish about Anthony, did I? So I just got no, Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You tell me. You? No, you do it okay. first. Then. Anthony English is a YouTuber and he, I didn't get to finish that. Sorry, I've got too much things going through my brain. Um, he has been instrumental in helping guiding me um, to set up my YouTube page and also 
um, how to deal with all the, the studio, the backroom stuff, and what you should be doing in the way of um, uh, descriptions, time, uh, what are they called, timestamps, um, and links. Uh, so it's been brilliant. Anthony, thank you very much. I will have Anthony on a live chat in the future. Um, so down the track, he will be on live chat. If anyone wants to know more about um, uh, what's the name, Zoom, he does. He has a, a channel on Zoom, but also on Calendly, I think how you pronounce it. So it's a link between um, your uh, your emails and calendars, and I think also Zoom. So there's a link between all of them. I don't fully understand it. I do watch most of Anthony's videos. They're short videos, three minute, four minute, uh, quick hits on how to use Zoom properly and a lot of incredible hints on Zoom. Now, just let me just make a comment. I really, read for me. I really enjoyed the broom videos. I think this is the reason the YouTube algorithm recommended your channel in the first place. Beautiful. Joseph, thank you very much. I needed to hear that because I'm going to do a live chat uh, with Nugget and a couple of other guys. I just spoke to Nugget yesterday uh, and we're going to taste some of that brew that we've made. So we've made three brews. Uh, Giuseppe was asking a question actually just a couple of days ago. Have you tasted it? Now, yes, I did. Just for all of you, all of you have known, have not read the message. Um, so D from Country Brewers in Nepean, uh, which is what about ten k's from here uh, towards Sydney. We're, we're on the end of Sydney, by the way. We're at the foothill of the Blue Mountains. Um, so, uh, uh, so we, I went there, got the recipe. She said, "Would you like to taste it?" Um, and I did. And I've got to tell you, her. Hers was a number of years old, and she sort of just stores them in the back room. It is a wine, so it just keeps maturing, um, and it tasted more like a spirit to me. I actually enjoyed it. It was a really nice spirit. Okay, so we got Tony, TJ, TBJ, uh, 90, uh, 1973. Uh, good morning, Tony. Um, morning, Tony. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I tasted that uh, spirit. It was, it was quite nice. Uh, sorry, not spirit, the wine, the mead wine. And um, but it's only still now. Only I think about was it now? What month uh, we're we talking about? End of April. So we did it late January. So, uh, three months. I think I told you that, Joseph. So three months. We released the video about four weeks after we made it, or round about. Um, and so in about two months, I'm going to rack that over again in about a month or so, and then then let it sit, and then we're going to try it. We'll do a taste test, not only of the mead. We're going to taste test the real ale, which I've never tasted before. And I still haven't tasted, by the way. Um, I've still I've got it in my store room, in my uh, cellar room under my staircase. Taste the pale ale. I did taste it last night. It's only two months old. Uh, it's not ready yet. It's still a little bit green, um, but it actually tasted quite nice. It's not as sweet, and I knew it wouldn't be because we had to put that uh, dry enzyme into it, and that dry enzyme just consumes all the sugar, uh, which makes it a low carb beer but also makes a very strong beer. So it's 7.2%. And can I tell you, uh, we had our second beer, uh, Nugget and I, yesterday, and uh, we felt a little bit tipsy. So it really was. I was so, just thinking, is it too early in the morning to try it? No, no. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> so we will do a live video on that, Giuseppe, of the um, of all the beers. And I will also try my pale ale, which I make all the time, because I love the pale ale, uh, just the 4.8%. Uh, um, I do dilute it a little bit. It's, it does come to five, but I'd make it a 4.8. Um, so I do have a question here from Anthony. No, Anthony's saying uh, you do, you're do you doing great, Musa. Your videos have chapters in them, which makes it easy to find spots in the, your video. You know, I've got to tell you, this is really important what Anthony just said. When I first released my Nilex video, I had a lot of flack. Now, first of all, uh, first of all it was my first video. There was hardly any close-ups. Uh, and, I, and I acknowledge that straight away because I wasn't good with videos. I didn't know how to video myself, so I got better. And I do do all my own videos generally. Also, I don't script anything, okay, but that one was scripted. Uh, so I sort of got used to how I'm going to do it. Now, because of the medication I'm on for the quina for my spinal injury, um, I do have brain fog. Uh, so I have, I've had a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee usually, but if I need to stimulate my brain, I will have a cup of coffee and I'm on coffee right now, which is fantastic. It's got my brain going. Uh, so um, that video uh, was a big highlight, and Anthony and I had a long conversation about that. Uh, people said, Musa, you're talking too much, and that's true. I do talk too much. But 
my videos are instruction videos. And I want to give you some background on what I'm talking about to give you the confidence of what I'm saying is true and it's working for me. So I'll always talk on my videos, but I try to reduce how much when I'm editing to take a lot of the talking out. That's not necessary. So that first video I did, Anthony instructed me, uh, do not shorten my videos if it's educational. And so my next video I released was not 10 minutes worth like my Nylex video, but instead I went opposite to what a lot of flack I got and I went to 24 minutes. And now that's my best video, which is the Absco Shed. It's about to hit 14,000 hits. Now that's not a lot of hits, but I'm only a new YouTuber and I'm getting used to how this all works. And people like Anthony have just been instrumental to guide me through this. Uh, I can't say enough. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, and I'm going to say, God bless. I'm a praying man, uh, and I do believe that, uh, you know, you've got to put your hands in, the, in in our Lord. So thanks, guys. Hey, uh, Corka D, thanks for coming on, Corka. Uh, sorry if I don't pronounce your name properly. I'm not a good speller. Yeah, so Corka, thanks very much for your messages as well. I really appreciate it, um, and, and it's good to have you on board. Uh, these live chats will be continuing uh, and I'm going to do it once a month, as I said earlier, and then get it down to about once every two weeks. Uh, and as I said to Giuseppe, we will be doing uh, a live chat on tasting the, 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 the beers and the wine that I've made. Um, and, uh, and I do tend to keep with products that are proven. I don't try to make my own beers. Um, I haven't done enough to do that. So I keep with Coopers. Coopers are a great brand. I'm not getting paid to say any of this and they really have a good backup support. And internationally, let me tell you, they really are recognised around the world. A lot of my videos uh, are being watched overseas because of the Cooper's video that originally uh, kicked off my uh, uh, my uh, algorithm, if you want to say. So Anthony's got here. We've been very welcome. Oh, sorry, you're very, very welcome. welcome. Great seeing you, your progress. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, so, Giuseppe, looking forward to the tasting live chat, you said? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's going to be interesting because it will be in the morning, by the way. So, far out. <laughs> For breakfast. It's going to be breakfast. <laughs> wow. Or oh, honey meat. <laughs> far out. Anyway, um, Koda, uh, I live uh, down the road. Okay. From the factory. Oh, good on you. Good on you. I didn't know that. Um, good to have you. So, yeah, we're in the foothills of the Blue Mountains. And, um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, look, this is a beautiful spot where, we, where we're um, videoing. We're on a fairly large acreage here. We're on 37 uh, and a half acres, so that's, what, 15 hectares. Um, and a lot of it is bush. We cannot touch it. Uh, one of the uh, people that I watch a lot is it's an American guy by the name of um, Josh uh, from... Uh, Forgot the name now, and how did I forget it? So Stony Ridge Farmer, how can I forget that? But I also watch a lot of videos from Tony. Uh, hopefully Tony will see this video in the future. Uh, Tony's been sending me a few messages. Um, I bought my T, uh, TYM tractor because of both of these guys, both of these guys. So Tony is or was one of the first of the TYM uh, uh, people showing their machine on YouTube as far as I know, and he's just brilliant with them. He knows everything about them. Um, and I bought them because he was at a show one day and he was doing a video on, on these products and he's saying that uh, all the highlights of the TYM tractor. Now, there's a lot of big-name tractors out there that are trying to rubbish TYM. Now, I've built a driveway with a 950-square-metre driveway with that tractor and it, and it was hard on my back to sit on there, but I was able to do, build that driveway over a period of time. And uh, a very good friend of mine who's a concreter, uh, Jason, who does all my concreting, um, he, uh, he he was fascinated with this machine, how well it worked. Um, so, yeah, so um, so we got Emma. Yeah, you got a comment from yeah. NF. You what, ready, Jason? Thoughts on the 4.5 metre workshop shed. Is it big enough for a workshop? Wanting to go to six by three, but it takes up too much yard space. Yeah, okay. Um, I think 4.5 sounds a lot better than 3 metre. 3 metre is just too narrow. Um, I don't know if you can make 4.5 by 6 metre. You might not have the room for that. But, yeah, I definitely think the bigger you can make a workshop, the better. Uh, so my workshop is quite big. Uh, it's 120 square metres. 
Um, I don't use all of it, so part of it is uh, blocked off. Um, but I keep all my equipment in there and I do some work in there. So the mobile chicken coop uh, was made in that shed and so is uh, the chicken feeders was made in there and, and I'll be doing a lot more videos in there. There will, there will be a video coming up in the, in the future. Uh, I've spoken to a mate of mine who's an arbitrist uh, and uh, we're going to make that video together. I've got an uh, uh, Oregon um, electric chainsaw and I just realised Joseph actually was with me when I first tried it. And that thing was a beast. It was a self sharpener, and we just killed the sharpener. So I had, I, I've got a new chain and sharpener now. So I'm going to show how to change that sharpener and chain and saw and so chain, and show it how it cuts. It's just brilliant, and how it's just got this self sharpener. Just touch the button and it sharpens it. Um, so it's only for people who are just doing a little bit of cutting of timber, not not doing a lot of cutting. Anyway, so Mambi has sent me a message, um, and. Uh, we need more videos on small DIY projects around the house, uh, fix holes in the jib rock, uh, leaking taps. Maybe they're coming. They're coming. Um, I've got to finish what I've got on my plate. Uh, and as I said, with my cord up I, I struggle to make videos a lot because uh, I need to rest a lot. So um, even sitting, is strugg I'm struggling with. Um, but regardless, um, yeah, I will be making these small DIY, pro uh, DIY projects. Uh, would I make them as a one minute shorts? Maybe. Shorts don't bring much income, let me tell you, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, the way you make money, there's uh, four different ways primarily, uh, and I'm doing this for business. I'll tell you straight out with you guys. I've mentioned earlier, I'll mention it again. Uh, I'm YouTubing because of my spinal injury. I need to stay home to work. Um, and so the way it works, uh, YouTube, you've got to get to 1,000 subscribers, uh, and then you've got to get 4,000 watch hours. Thanks to you guys, I'm well past 4,000 hours. If you haven't subscribed, I'd ask you, please, if you would subscribe. Also, I'd ask if you could share these videos and uh, possibly other people subscribing. So I'm at now, I think, around 674, 75 subscribers, uh, which is great. So I'm not too far off. You have to do it in a one-year period. I've only got three and a half months to go, um, but it, it's accelerating thanks to you guys. Um, so, yeah, so when I get to that level, um, uh, then I'll become monetized. Then also, uh, you make money on your videos. If they're longer, they're better, but long as they're instructional videos and people are watching them. If they're boring videos, it's useless. So hopefully they're instruction videos and good for you guys. So the commercials on there, they give me a very small percentage of that. It's not a big income. So I'm selling a lot of products on my channel through uh, what's the name, Amazon. So I have a lot of links there. That eventually will become a bit of an income. But the big thing what I'm looking for is endorsements and also sponsorship. That won't happen until I grow my channel. Uh, and once again, thank you all for your support because that's what's helping me grow. And I am expecting to grow this channel, uh, you know, to a good size. Um, but I, I never want you guys to stop sending me messages, please, because you're the ones who are directing me. You're guiding me which direction I'm going. Um, but I've got to be true to myself. I make real videos. They're all real videos. Whatever I make, it's because I'm doing something purposely at home and I'll make it into a video. The next video will be released will be um, how to clean old uh, grey timber um, and there's wood cleaner for that and uh, Feast Watson make a brilliant product and then then their product, they've got a new product which is uh, a hybrid, it's an oil but you can wash it with water. It's just brilliant. I, I felt really reluctant using it and it's just brilliant. That video is going to uh, be released next Friday. So uh, these kind of, I need more home improvement videos but when I, I had to have a second operation, by the way, if you guys don't know, and I had to have it in November, the incubation video of the chickens, those chicks were hatching as I was having my operation, and my daughter was looking after those chicks while I was in, in hospital. But they can only stay in the incubator for two days. And so when I got home, I, I, I've just finished having a spinal operation, and I had to finish that video. Look, it's hard for me to cope with what I'm doing with these videos and also with my spinal injury. So I've got to make sure I don't re-injure myself. Uh, the reason I had to have a second operation was because of a stenosis. I had uh, a regrowth and that pushed into my spine again, the exact same spot. It was from arthritis and it's from scar tissue. Um, so I've got to be careful how I make my videos and not to hurt myself. But um, anyway, uh, we've got, a few got another guest. So Mambi's just sent a message and says, MF, uh, if you can read it for me, Jason. No worries. Corker D said, just get my or maybe got my old dear to subscribe now. So. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we've got MF, one more question about the Easy Shed. 
they are much cheaper than the Apsco. But as I saw in your video, it's much easier to install the Apsco. Should I go cheaper or easier to install? Thanks again, guys. Okay. Actually, I think yeah. my wife. Yeah, please, you explain the, it because you're the one who she bought it. Yeah, the Easy Shed um, was on special. I think they have their specials, maybe they. And Musa made a comment that the plastic was hard to peel off the Easy Shed. So it must have been sitting there for a while, and that's probably why they discounted it. So they do have discounts, but you are going to struggle with it. I mean, um, yeah, but don't, don't be turned off by getting an Easy Shed. It's actually quite strong. Please don't. I, I do not want anyone to think I'm going to rubbish Easy Sheds. They're actually a really good product. But if you've never done one, I'm, I'm going to tell you now you'll struggle. If you look at go, – go, I'm going to put the links in this video for after – uh, sorry, after the video, and you'll see those links. Just watch it and, and see the comments that people are writing. The Asco shed, I'm getting beautiful, you know, endorsements. People think it's fantastic. It's great. Thank you for making the video. You just made it a bit easier for me, but it's an easy shed to put up. Then read the easy shed comments. It, it's a huge contrast. Should you go cheaper? I used to go cheaper when I first got married. I didn't have much money, and I started building houses and building a wealth for myself. Um, and it's sort of been my big income building houses, actually, and that's how I learned how to build properly. But I've always been in the building trade, even though my background is dressmaking. For me, there's no contradiction there, by the way. Both of them need accuracy and precise work, both of them. And that's why I'm good with both, because I enjoy both. It's really, if no one's ever touched a sewing machine before, guys, seriously, I'm a married man. I've got five kids. There's nothing girly about it. And I've got to tell you, it's a great way to just, just to relax, to chill out, really it is. And there's another video coming out, a sewing one, probably in about three months. I've already made it, but I don't want to release too many of the same thing. Uh, and it was a, the christening of my, uh, my, my granddaughter. So I show how to make the pattern and how to make the dress. Now, never go cheaper. So I've got to be honest, never go cheaper. Sorry about that long-winded answer. Never go cheaper with anything. I learned when I first got married I had to, but as I started building my wealth, I started building better houses and learning better techniques of doing things. And do you know what? One thing I really learned about going cheaper, you might save 10%, and usually it's only 10%, maybe 20%, sometimes 50%. But remember that if that fails quickly, then you're going to have to rebuy it again. And the, the thought of having that problem all the time is really, pardon me, not good. Now, the only problem with Easy Shed, why it's cheaper, because they're not putting in the, the work in the actual sheet. They don't have pre-punch holes in there. Um, they don't have instructions or illustrations. They're not paying for people to, to market this product properly, to help it easy for you guys to put it together. So I, I found it fairly easy. I struggled with a couple of things where I wasn't sure about, but I just worked it out because I'd already put sheds together before. I worked out what they wanted me to do with the shed and it turned out perfect. Okay, But um, Joseph, uh, as he said, he would have struggled putting it up if he would have put it up. Anyway, so I've got a, a couple more questions here. No, you've got a, it's, it's hello, new subscriber. My son said, so you've got a new subscriber. Thank you. Sarah Lee Grace. Hey, Sarah Lee. Um, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so um, there, there, there are more videos coming, as I said, uh, and, and a diverse uh, range of videos. The sewing videos, I was going to just do one and just see how it went and just let it go. I didn't think it's going to kick off. Now, my last video I just released uh, a week, uh, it's a week and a, a day ago, which is how to use a Butterex pattern. Um, if you've not done dressmaking before, but you do sewing um, and you want to get to the next level, uh, that video is, is going to help you to a degree, um, hopefully enough, hopefully. Um, and, and by the way, anyone who thinks there was a problem with my voice in that video uh, where the voice changed completely, uh, that was done on purpose. And in that, I say it's when it comes to cutting of the fabric. These are fabric scissors, only to be used with fabric, never with paper. Now, that was an instruction given to me by my teacher when I did my TAFE course and she drummed it in our head. And I went and bought a really expensive scissors. And years later, my wife didn't mean it, but she destroyed it. And then I bought another good one and she destroyed that one too. So when I made that video, I thought it was supposed to be a bit of a joke and it came out probably a little harsh. So I changed my voice to soften it a little bit. It was done on purpose, guys. It was purpose. It was, it's, it's something funny. It's It's... You'll see a little bit of humour in the video, but it's dry humour. So sorry about that. The chipmunk voice. The chipmunk. Uh, again, just change the pitch of my voice. Um, it's like the incubation video where the chick is saying, please subscribe. That's my voice. 
yeah, elevated. Anyway, um, <clears throat> any more questions, guys? I, I, I'd like to know. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to know if there's. Uh, so MF has just said thanks uh, a lot, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. So I'm struggling to see the screen, um, and it's a big video. I just my eyes are sort of I've got uh, adjustable glasses here. Anyway, so um, yeah, any questions uh, about the Easy Shed or any other shed? Uh, and also, um, yeah, about the uh, MF uh, 4.5 by 3 metre. Um, look, that size is okay, but it's just narrow. I just thought I'd just get back to that with that question. It is narrow. I've had small sheds and I found it frustrating. They fill up really quickly, especially if it's 3 metre. If you put shelving in that, it fills up too quick. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I um, well, going off the, the sheds, I personally like your self sufficient videos, especially now with inflation so high. Yeah. We, we, we need to all learn to become self sufficient because we're not going to be able to afford yeah. certain things. And then, yep. um, yeah, I, that's my preference anyway. Is the chickens. The I eggs. love doing the self sufficient videos. Um, look, I, I, I've never had a high income, um, but I've always made money on uh, building my own, own house and then selling it. Uh, and making a bit of money on it because I always make a high quality house, um, and so I've done it four times. Uh, three, three have sold, but I've built four houses. Um, so that's actually how I've made my income. And um, we lived in Batemans Bay for ten years, and I love Batemans Bay. If anyone's watching, uh, even in the future, if you go back and watch this live chat, uh, hi to all my friends at Batemans Bay. And uh, yeah, so we've got two questions. Oh no, two uh, comments. If you read with me, Joseph and from the English. How to organise a small shed when you've got a mix of junk and tools that you rarely use? I'm not a handyman. Okay, that, that's a really good question. Everything's about efficiency, and you'll see a lot, I'll talk a lot about efficiency on my videos. Um, just to put this in perspective, I've, I've, did a, I've done a bit of travel over the years, you know, flying, and my wife used to sit there and watch me fascinated how I would have my meal and then reduce everything on that tray down to a little cup. Now, that sounds probably silly to most people, but it's about efficiency. I always challenge myself how small I can condense the the packagings. So it's all about efficiency, uh, Anthony. It's about having proper shelving, um, cupboards, um, putting things not just in the middle of the garage or the shed, um, but putting things uh, like having um, those, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're uh, boards with holes in them, right? They've got punched holes in them, perforated, and then you have the little hangers. So having one of those boards is going to be a saving grace because you can hang your um, uh, whipper snipper, uh, brush cutter, uh, Americans call it, I think, brush cutters, whip snipper, um, what else, uh, your tools, uh, your, your um, shovel. Uh, so you don't have to have everything bunched up in a corner like I have, and I've got to get one of these boards. Um, but I've got a big shed, so I'm being a bit lazy. But I will actually make – I've got a mezzanine in my shed, and I'll be making a staircase uh, later in the future. It's down the track. I haven't got the time to make that or, or the money at the moment. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, next question. Sell uh, me in. Charming Carl. Thank you, Musa. Wise advice regarding selection of cheap versus premium products. Um, He's just thanking you for the advice. Ah, thank you. Thank, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean, while I'm, I'm trying to read the message, and, and it's a little fuzzy for my glasses, so I need to be close up. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Salmin is a very good friend of mine, and um, and uh, he is very efficient himself. Everything he does is very efficient. And I, I think probably that's why uh, him and I get along so well, because we think very similar. Um, and, um, yeah, thanks, thanks uh, Salmin. Um, Mambir Kohil. Musa, Mambikoli. Yeah. Musa, the next video should be how to look for petrol on our properties in these expensive times. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got three petrol stations next to you. How can you worry, man? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Look, storing petrol in a fire area. We're in a bushfire area, um, and and I've got to tell you, uh, yeah, you've got to be careful with with having, um, you know. Any kind of gases, we don't have gas on this property, everything's electrical. So the next video after this oil video will be how to make a Lebanese sweet called Namura. And so uh, that is on our electric oven and our elements are playing up a bit. But regardless, uh, having any kind of fuel on a property in a fire area, we, we are rated on our property, BAL29. Now BAL29 just means BAL is abbreviated from uh, bushfire attack level. 
So our rating 39 is 39,000 kilowatts per square metre, I think it is. Uh, so we had to build this house to rate that kind of fire. Um, so I feel quite comfortable with that, but we do a lot of asset protection through um, the RFS, Joseph's in the RFS, so the Royal, uh, so the Rural Fire Service, and so they did a backburn. Joseph was part of that. They did a backburn on our property when I was doing the concrete video. So if you look at the concrete video, you'll see some haze and smoke in the background and helicopters that were doing a lot of water dropping to make sure that they can control those fires. Um, so, yeah, I would never put petrol on my property and I wouldn't advise many people to put petrol in their property for storage. Um, but it is good. I do actually carry four lots of 20 litre, so four gallons roughly, containers of uh, fuel for my equipment. But in times when fuel is really high in price, I use those containers in my car and wait for those prices to come back down. Because um, here in Sydney, I don't know anywhere, I think Batemans Bay was fairly similar, but you uh, actually Batemans Bay wasn't. Uh, Canberra is and other uh, cities in Australia, you'll find your prices fluctuating a lot. I don't know around the world, but I know here in Sydney it always fluctuates. Um, so when it does get really high, I will use my petrol uh, to to make life a bit more affordable. So maybe buying, uh, maybe, maybe buying some kind of uh, jerry can, big ones, maybe two or three, that might save you. Um, yeah. Now you've got a comment from Anthony English. Great idea about the pegboard. Yeah, that pegboard is really good. That's going to get a lot of things off the ground, really is. If you put a big enough pegboard, um, that will really save you. Uh, I'm just going to go back down these messages here. Um, okay. I'm just going to double check. Yep. Yep. Sorry, I just had to just check if I missed any. Um, and also, I just want to see participants. I want to see who's in. Okay, it doesn't tell me all the participants. Okay. Yeah, so that's fantastic. Look, guys, um, I was hoping that Nugget was going to come on, but it is raining at the moment. It's actually stopped just in the last probably 20 minutes. Um, but uh, uh, Chicken Nugget was supposed to be on. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, you'll see a lot of his comments. Uh, very funny guy. Um, and uh, so, yeah, he was, he's at a father-son camp and he was supposed to be on live and wanted to ask me a few questions. Uh, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll do a live chat with Nugget uh, in the future when we do our um, wine beer tasting and that'll be a live chat uh, coming up when the honeymoon reaches around six months. So it's about three months from now. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But, um, okay, I think we'll round up soon because Jason's got to go soon. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, being on the live chat and thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you very, very much. I really, really appreciate it. It is going to help uh, help us grow uh, and, and we're here for the long term. I'm, I, I'm, I'm trapped in this world of, uh, of spinal injury uh, and I'm making the best of it. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to make the best of it. And, uh, and you'll see I might actually make another uh, quarter equina video because that, that first one I made, uh, about the hydro pool uh, was when I just learned how to YouTube. So I might make one and, and probably a little bit more bubbly than I was on the first one. Um, I actually struggled making that video. It was a very emotional video for me to make. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, it, it had to be done uh, where I was explaining why I'm YouTubing. Anyway, so um, the, so Min's got a message. Uh, Musa, can you please uh, release a video on how to – What's that? Lock and lock 7-Eleven petrol price via fat location. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I mean, you make you kill me. <laughs> uh, that's funny, funny, funny. Anyway, uh, Xiaoming, by the way, is uh, studying to be a lawyer. He's going to be uh, a lawyer soon, and, um, and uh, I think he's going to be registered soon, so... Uh, maybe not a good advertising. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, great session, Musa and Joseph. Thanks. Okay, guys, look, I'll, I'll leave it there, and we will have another live chat probably in about four weeks or so. Uh, I'd appreciate I'll send you all the reminder, but I appreciate if you can come on. If not, don't stress. Please don't stress. But if you just pass the word on, it'd be great. Um, I've got uh, – hang on before we go. Uh, Glenn uh, – was that uh, Glenn Brogan? Do you think it's really necessary for bits of the Jacob's roof crumbling into your pint from Noel standing on it? I don't understand. Uh, Glenn Brogan. 
do you think it's really necessary for bits of the Jacob's roof crumbling into your pint from Noel standing? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Please answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for that, uh, Corga. Uh, Glenn, I'll look at this message and try to work it out. Um, and uh, uh, I'm just not sure. Uh, I think it's really necessary for the bits of of the Jacob's roof crumbling into your pit, pit from Noel's standing on it. Um, that means that's maybe something I've done in the past. Maybe. You'll have to make a post afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to have to make a post. Glenn, stay, stay tuned. I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, think that through. Remembering that I am on medication, so I don't. It, the brain doesn't function as well as it should, uh, especially first in the morning. As it gets to the afternoon, it works a lot better. Um, Thanks for having me on. Lucy. Ah, look at that, Stony Vineyards on. Hey, Stony. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen Stony, he's an American who is. Uh, he's got his own beer channel, had his, uh, and, and let me tell you, he's a funny guy, um, and uh, and he does a lot of beer reviews. He's just done a beer review on Blame It On Russia, and so um, I'll put a link for that, uh, Blame It On Russia. He's a funny guy, uh, very laid back. He's, he's not an intense uh, YouTuber like me, uh, but I find his uh, videos very funny. Uh, so Stony, uh, Stony Yard Vineyard, uh, I, you've got to give me your name privately, I've got to tell you. Uh, I'd like to just to have a chat with you. Uh, now, I'm not a beer. Uh, I'm not going not gonna to pretend that I'm the best beer maker in this world. I'm not. I just follow procedures really well, uh, hence why I make Coopers. Um, but uh, Stoneyard Vineyard actually makes everything from scratch and just full on and makes an incredible range of different types of alcohol. Um, so, Anthony. Uh, hey, welcome, Stoney. Hey, good. I'm Musa and Joseph. We're talking about you early in the live chat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. And, Glenn, I will get back to you. I'm just going to think that through. Um, thanks, guys. I'll speak to you later. See you later. And, um, and look forward to seeing you on the next videos. Thanks, guys.